Now, two people in the Bible, Isaiah and John, deal with the idea of men having female breasts, which would make them a true hermaphrodite, right? In Isaiah 60, 60 16, right? He's talking to Israel and saying they will suck the shad of kings, right? As in female sh shad, right? And the word used is malachim, right? Now, queens is malachoth, right? With a O W T H, right? Malachim is like Elohim, right? <laughs> or Shadim, which is the plural of female breasts, and it's masculine in form, right? For both breasts, right? Shad is the singular form for when you nurse a child, a woman will use one breast or the other, even if she has a son and a daughter or more than one child do, right? Though she can also swap, right, by the way, if one breast gets sore, she can use the other breast while breastfeeding. This is called weaning a child, right? Well, these kings with female breasts are offered by Isaiah to give suck to Israel, right? <laughs> As a mother with their own child, right? Now, it also mentions kings and queens, I think, in chapter 50 or something like that, right? Or 52, somewhere around there. And that the kings and queens would also take care of your children, right? But here it talks about kings with female breasts who would give you suckle as well. <laughs> and the wording is masculinized, not the feminine form malakoth, which is queens, right? And the word isn't to make the king kings queens either. either. <laughs> Malachi with an H at the end is queens, right? Any ending like Sar is prince. Sara is prince her. Mm -hmm. Malachi, right, is plural masculine, right? But even Shadim, which is two female breasts, is also plural masculine and not Shadoth, right? Which is really what it should be for some reason. But Moses masculinizes the word, right? For two female breasts, right? As does the Greeks. Stethos applies towards the male's chest, right? But Mastos, the female's chest. And both are masculine words because they end with O-S, right? But, like, Theos is God's, but also includes the goddesses in the Greek, right? <laughs> but Thea, T-H-E-A, just like in the Hebrew, right? And Theo is God, right? The Thea is goddess, right? T-H-E-A, right? Anyway, anyway. So, um, anyway, anyway, we're working out a few more things with the details of the middle wreck, which was again, right, someone else's fault, because I stopped in time and someone hit me from behind, right? Every time you hit someone behind, it's always your fault, right? No, no. Now, if I notice someone else's stop and I stop in time, you can't hit me from behind just because you're not paying attention to the road either, either. Now, like I said, the confusion with the um, truck and the bus, I can't do nothing about because the only one I could assume there was either the officer or the bus driver for messing up the accident, right? And again, I, know, I didn't try to sue him, the, um, no. 
officer and he pled sovereign immunity, which means like if he shoots someone right, and it's in the line of duty, right, or it's part of the job, right, <laughs> even if he makes a mistake, he's not responsible for it civilly, right, and that gets him out of paying me anything for it, right, <laughs> and, uh, and that's what that does, that's like a criminal pleading first offense, where they make their first mistake, right, like, my situation was my stepbrother, and I was kind of loopy after my accident anyway, <laughs> when, in 87, right? And I had my accident in 86, which was just a couple months before he, he came up with his plan to go out and burglarize someone. Well, see, I, I'm so, sort of loopy, so I dress up full ninja outfit like I'm in a movie, right? Because I don't know this is even serious, right? When he got me to do it, right? And I, I'm thinking, you know, this is just a gag because I don't know any place to burglarize. And I, I guess he, he shouldn't either, right? Right. <laughs> if you understand what I mean, right? I don't know. I don't know where to go out and burglarize unless you don't scope the place out, right? I mean, meaning you have a way in and out, right? <laughs> Well, he did. He did. <laughs> See, I'm the one who didn't know he already had a place staked out, right? Right. This is what a criminal will do. They'll stake out a joint, and you know they probably even know the people. Right. <laughs> and he had a way into the house when they were out, right? Well, I wasn't part of all that. I, I thought it was a gag, right? Like we would, I would dress up as a ninja for Halloween and things like that, right? <laughs> So I thought it was just a gag, right? I know. And plus he got to the place so easily, I thought they were in on it, right? I didn't know what was going on, right? Right. Plus I'm fresh from a head trauma in a car wreck, right? So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'll play along, right? You know, i just thinking I'm playing along with him, right? Well, he goes in, gets some guns and some jewelry and minor things and all that, mm-hmm. And then he goes to pawn the guns, right? In South Carolina somewhere. Right? <laughs> but then he screws me out the money, screws me out the deal, right? <laughs> Keeps the money for him and Troy, and they can buy some weed, right? And um, my mom tells me they found out about it, right? And I get. Um, before the judge, right, they arrest me and everything, and I go before the judge, and I plead first offenders because I wasn't really sure what the hell was even going on. I was kind of in days and confused from the car wreck, right? So I was just kind of playing along, right? I didn't know it was really that serious, right? I thought it was all a gag on Mark's part, right? But when I, again, got my... um. The first offenders, they gave me community service, um, probation, right, and um, restitution, which I paid all that back, right, and that's why it took me till I was twenty to get into the navy, right. But I still did a good job before I got into the navy, cause I had to show I had the character to be in the navy, right, <laughs> before I got in the navy. Well, I was working two jobs, like I said, at Roger Wood and um, Little Chick, <laughs> or Crispy Chick, Crispy Chick, right? Up the road from where we lived when we moved to Garden City, right? <laughs> Which was after that, too, right? <laughs> and I did all my community service. I did, right? My mom would take me on Saturday and Sunday mornings, and, right? I worked all that off, right? Mm hmm. I also was going to school with uh, Savannah State, right? And taking the bus to get there sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was doing good before I got into the Navy anyway. Now, when I got there, I did good through boot camp and ain't school, right? But then when I got to the shit, guess what happened? They asked you if you were gay, went crazy, right? 
and I couldn't do the job. I didn't know what I was doing, right? <laughs> Half the time I'm having to guess that they're trying to electrocute me because King electrocuted himself. And guess who was uh, the pretty face he saw before he electrocuted himself? Mine. <laughs> guess who it felt like he was blaming for that? Me. <laughs> and guess who thought King was trying to electrocute him because he was on the give him the work card? Me. <laughs> and guess because... Uh, again, right? <laughs> who was never really trained beyond A school? Me. <laughs> Guess who was trained on watch in 1991, but wasn't even um, trained but one time, right? <laughs> and then in 93, they're expecting me to train somebody else. Like, I remember anything, right? And they're just sticking me on watch by then, <laughs> On the 12th of 4th at that, which was make me sleep deprived, right? <laughs> As well, that I meant she didn't, we have our little whirlwind thing, right? Either we got our wires across and she didn't tell me she was waiting for marriage and I kind of took advantage of her and enticed her into sex and she didn't think we had sex. I guess she thought we did all, I guess. I don't know, but <laughs> whatever messed up the relationship, it messed it up, right? I was confused. I didn't know what I did wrong, right? Because she didn't tell me she was waiting for marriage, even though she told me she was a Christian. Some Christian girls what, do? Some Christian girls what? Don't, right? And they usually tell you up front, Gina. <laughs> That's the thing. And, uh, now, if they're real straight, they say no huggy, no kissy. He said, I get a wet drink, honey. They always let you kiss them or hug them or anything, right? Some girls, right? Some girls will, I know. And see, what you got to do is make sure I understand how far you're willing. Even if I don't, I might go all the way with you, right? That's every male's ideal date, <laughs> to go all the way with the female, right? I know. <laughs> and the only ones who could have wrote you negative letters about me being gay or my shit things if I made love to you on the island, idiot, right? I know we had sex, <laughs> right? Did you? <laughs> but I keep asking you. <laughs> I don't remember I had sex with you, Sheena. <laughs> I thought we both were on the same page there. Right? Yes, it's premarital, but I'm not all religious like that. I really want both of us about it. Right? Neither me nor Sheena were engaged to marry someone else. If we have premarital sex, we can just set a marriage or right, date and get married then. Right? And it still don't say you can't have sex until you get married either. Back then, the father determined who the daughter married anyway. I know. That's what Paul's really talking about in Corinthians 7. Right. Whether a man should keep his virgin or let her marry. Right. <laughs> that means the dad or the father. Right. <laughs> now, he told you two ways, though. If you let her marry, you do fine. And if you keep her a virgin, you do fine. So did Jephthah. His daughter may have died a virgin because he was supposed to offer it a birth offering the first thing that came to him. But you can't offer a child as a birth offering in, in the law, right? Of Moses, right? You can't offer a human sacrifice, right? That's why Isaac was a sacrifice but a ram in his place, right? And that was Jehovah trying to do with human away with People who would sacrifice their children to the peace of God, right? It was rumored that the Philistines did it. The Baal worshippers did it, right? The Phoenicians and all that all throughout Israel, right? Now, the settlements, they say, didn't even pop up immediately, right? But slowly throughout Israel's history, right? But they were in the land. They were in the land. At least within say, a hundred years of Moses, right? <laughs> or so, or so. <laughs> Within that period of time. And, of course, they're wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, right? With Moses as their head. And supposedly Joshua leads them into the promised land, right? Well, again, <laughs> could you even imagine you're wandering through the mountain? This region of Sinai Peninsula, right? And, and you can't even get out 
of that area for a while, right, for like 40 years, right? And when you do, right? <laughs> now, we don't know if some of the stories are metaphorical about how God will be there for you if you need it, right? Especially Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, right? As they're excavating Jericho, they find out it's an older city than they originally thought, too, right? And basically, if it, the walls did fall down, it was way before Joshua and Israel even got there, right? Plus, the only way, um, again, right, stone can fall into the ground as if it's built on sand. Remember Jesus taught the parable about the rock versus the sand and the house being built on the rock versus the sand? Right. That could have to do with something with Jericho. Right. Well, well, if you built build a stone wall around Jericho, right, and it's built on sand, it might sink into the sand. Right. Plus, Israel danced around it a lot, right? And that's why it sank into the earth, right? <laughs> it could be the weight of the rock, the blurry of the trumpets, caused the sand, right? The, where it buried the stone uh, wall around it, right? It's just a theory. It's just a theory. Like I said about Jesus possibly walking on a, what's called a, um, a, uh, rivers have them. <laughs> sandbar, sandbar, right. See, a sandbar uh, is still laying in the sea, I know, but it's close to the shore, right. And the difference with a sandbar, right, versus being in the sea, right, and walking on the sea, is the land still goes out further into the sea than it looks like if you're coming in from further out in the sea, right? And Jesus has to be walking on something solid, either that or he's walking on water miraculously. I'm not saying it yet, right? Either or, either or. But I make it a suggestion that maybe there was a sandbar near the shore because immediately they were also at the shore, right? After all that happened, too. Right? And immediately they were at the shore, right? You read it in the Bible, too, right? After all that, right? And the storms as well. Mm -hmm. Now, again, right, every storm you know, that comes up as it's doing its thing, right, has it in too, right? <clears throat> and just as the starkest before the dawn, it's comes before the end of the storm, right? It starts calming down, and you might can even discern that, right? Now, another thing Jesus could do is probably read body language versus your mind, right? Now, like Simeon and the woman, the sinner woman, right, who came in and washed Jesus' feet with her tears, right, would some say that might be Mary Magdalene as well, right? They also say that she might have had ten husbands, or seven husbands, who did not get her pregnant, and she cast them out, right? <laughs> ten devils, ten devils, seven devils, seven devils, I'm sorry, right? Well, Mark talks of Mary, Jesus casting seven devils out of Mary. Right, right. Well, men can be devils uh, in your life, right, to keep you from Jesus, right, which is what he meant, right. And Jesus cast seven devils out of her, right, seven men, seven men. And the scribes of the Sadducees, when asking Jesus about the resurrection, Talk of this woman knowing seven men. <laughs> well, Isaiah says something similar about seven women taking hold of one man, saying, Well, eat on bread and wear on the barrel, only that's be called by thine angel we are reproach. Right. Now, this is scripturally proven, not just everyday use, right? But, right. 
If you don't understand what that means, you got to go to Rachel and Jacob, right? The woman at the well. Mm -hmm. Comes to mind, too. She was in Samaria, but she was also at Jacob's well. Mm -hmm. Think about it. <laughs> and Jesus goes to her first. Aren't you reminded of Jacob and Rachel? <laughs> and the woman had five husbands that was living with the dude pre without being legally married to him, right? <laughs> but probably was having sex with him occasionally, right? Dude, too. Yet Jesus would be the seventh person you met, right? Did he ha take a shot at it, too? <laughs> Damn. And you think the Lord didn't have premarital sex? <laughs> Damn. He might have. He might have. Because, <laughs> see, the women are scorned who can't have a child, usually in Israel. And especially if she's with seven brothers and none of them get are pregnant and they all die. It, there's something wrong with her in the Jewish mind, not the men. <laughs> they look at there's something wrong with her. She's not getting pregnant. Like that's the only thing that matters and the only important thing a woman can do. Nevertheless, she shall be saved and shall bury my ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some say that <laughs> in Israel. <laughs> you know what that means, All right? <laughs> now the king of glory shall come in. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Right? Who is the door? The woman, the womb, the womb. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the door. <laughs> you got to enter in by the womb, by the womb. <laughs> and I have a womb. I have the womb. <laughs> That's what you don't realize he's saying as well. I'm the womb. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Well, if one is made first, the male, <laughs> what does that make the female made? Last, last. <laughs> if you make two <laughs> from one, right. it also means she's part of that body. He and they shared the first body, right? 50-50. 50-50. Could explain where the hermaphroditic gene comes from. From the fallen angels and Satan himself, if he got even pregnant too, or got pregnant by Adam. Right. Now, if he had a daughter, she would be triple X. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, Satan, if he's a hermaphrodite, would be released an XX gene with an X from Adam. Right. Which makes her triple X, right? <laughs> She's the real Lilith, too, right? Not. Eve, they were already married by God, by God. In day six, in day six. They sinned, though, in day seven, when the tree of life rested from its works, being that it's what God made everything through, according to the first chapter of John and the first chapter of Colossians with Paul, who tells you Christ is also the firstborn of every creature. And nothing was made without him being made first, right? That's another thing why Christians call him God Muslims. Through him, God made everything, right? That was made. <laughs> and he's also three forms, not two, right? He appeared to Abraham and Sarah in three forms. And two went on to Sodom while one stood before Abraham, too, right? That's still three, right? Now, I think the other two were a male and female couple. Mm -hmm. The first form is both, right? Isaiah calls one form Gabor of the Lord, one form Ish, and the other form Yolda. And as all three, as all three. And also, the Lord sent before you Aaron, Miriam, and Moses, right? Or Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, right? Again, Moses would sit down the river by his sister, right? Who was watching him, right? And knowing he was supposed to be drowned in the river, right? Well, Pharaoh's daughter found him, right? Yet at the same time, 
Pharaoh's law demanded her to drown him herself. But she also had compassion on him. But why? If it's a daughter, you can leave her alive, right? And just had to drown the sons in the river, right? But now, but now. Now, if I am saved by Pharaoh's daughter, you think Pharaoh himself don't think this is a Hebrew child sitting down the river? Right. Of course he does. But there's only one legal way he can't kill the child, and that's if he's a daughter. Innocent, innocent. He was one himself, right? A true hermaphrodite. Which are born one in a hundred thousand births. That means ten out of a million hermaph human beings, more male and female, right? Maybe two million even, right? One out of a hundred thousand might be, I don't know, or fifty thousand, fifty thousand, right? Male and female, male and female, might be a hermaphrodite. So in a million, that's ten. In ten million, that's what? A hundred. A hundred. In a hundred million, that's what? A thousand. A thousand. In a billion, that's what? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. <laughs> you see the number is still low. Mm -hmm. And in seven billion, how many will there be? Seventy thousand. Right. That might be born a hermaphrodite. Out of that big of a population, too. Right. Now, I've seen them in action, too. Right. Because they do porn. Right. And they could have sex with each other or a male and a female, too. Right. And they can do butt sex and straight sex. Right. <laughs> That's where I came up with the idea Adam and Eve had sex with Satan anyway, dummy. Right. It's in the porn world. But I'm also doing it under educational purposes, right? To find out the truth about it, right? <laughs> now, if you don't want to look at it, I can't make you that. It's my job, but I've seen it for myself, right? I've seen it and I believe, right? What it means, what it means. And where they come from, the angels who sinned and with Satan in Genesis 6, right? Now, Peter and Jude called them angels <laughs> in the new, in the new. Even though they're called the sons of God by Moses and Job, right, right, also mentions them, right. But Peter and Jude call them angels, both of them, Moses and in the Greek, that's angos, right. It also means messengers. Now, Satan also took a third of the angels in heaven with him when he fell, right. Say whatever the population, some say that has to do with the 144,000 and why they don't marry, right? They're to replace the fallen angels, right? Who fell? Who will? <laughs> and that means if that's the third that fell, the 144,000, you multiply by three, you get the actual number of angels, right? Which is what? <laughs> 433,000, right? Because what's 12 times 3 normally? Right. 12. 12. Right. But it's 4 times 3. Right. Uh, 144 times 3. Right. Which 3 times 1 is what? 3. Ah, it's carry the 1. Carry the 1. See, 12 is times three is, four times three is what? Twelve. Twelve. So that's two. Right? Carry the one. Right? Four times three again is what? Twelve. Right? Plus one is thirteen. Right? Carry the one again. Right? Three times one is four. Mm -hmm. Right? Three times one is three plus one. One plus one. That's 432,000 angels total, including Satan himself, and one. and one. And the man has become as one of us, the angel said to Adam and Eve, to know good and evil. Mm -hmm. 
It's the same angel who wrestled with Jacob. It's the same angel who spoke to Moses. Oh, no. It's the same angel who spoke to the prophets throughout the Old Testament, right? Who became human and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, right? Full of grace and truth, according to the Paul and John, right? Now, mm -hmm. the problem, though, is he's also drawing the men away, Satan, easier than he is the female under hermaphrodite, right? Which still in the earth makes the males more susceptible to Satan than the females. Why? Mm -hmm. Satan says what to God? I would sooner... Reign in hell than serve in heaven. And some of you men are that way. <laughs> yes, you are. You would sooner reign in hell as Satan than serve other men as Christ did. Right. That's the problem, too. You don't want to help out people, right? You want them serving you like you're the big dog on campus, right? The head concho, right? And doing things for you. Mm -hmm. Not because like me, you're disabled, but because you're just freaking lazy and want someone to do something for you. Because that's how you were raised as a small brat child, right? You were raised in kingly glory, right? Being the son of the Caesar, right? That's Constantine for you, Christians, right? He's not a man of Christ, he's a pagan, right? Perhaps till he shortly before he died, they say, he didn't get, even get baptized shortly before he died. Right? Mm -hmm. Though that's good that he did, of course. Christ forgave him of the thief on the cross. Right? Christ ain't the one who can't forgive you. There's usually Satan and his followers. Right? And sometimes it's easier to follow him here than, again, Jesus or, mm, again, <laughs> God, God. Now, God, according to John, is love. The perfect love casts out fear. Right. Now, you're the fear, though. Oh, no. Satan, because he will judge you and condemn you, and he died that you may die. Mm. And stay dead. Right. That's why John said he is, was, but is not. Right. Meaning he died after he committed the sin with Adam and Eve and Eve. Right. And after he gave birth to the daughter he and Adam had, right. who else could Cain marry? <laughs> it also took Seth, after Adam had him 105 years later, so much time for him and Eve to have his wife. Right. And they had sons and daughters after that, too. Right. But Cain had to wait for his wife to mature to have a child with her. Right. So did, again, mm, Abel. Mm. Now, the thing is, if there's one woman with two men, aren't they going to fight over her as well? <laughs> yeah. That's what the fight was about as well with Abel. Mm. They were fighting over the only woman who was there, the daughter of Adam and Satan. Right. And one could have been the son of Satan, they say, right? If you read the Enoch parables, right? And you read the Gnostic Gospels, uh, they talk of Satan kind of raping me too, right? Both naturally and obscurely, right? The natural is straight sex. The obscure sex is butt sex. But why would he do that, right? He's trying to teach him good and evil, right? See, the good sex was straight sex, which they had in Eden before the fall. Mm -hmm. But the evil was the anal, right? Not because, again, like I'm trying to explain to you about gay people, that's evil now, right? Is how he did it with Adam and Eve that made it evil as well. Mm -hmm. He also hurt Adam to get him to condemn him for it, right? And Eve and Eve. By condemning his wife, for the sin, right? They both committed, right? With Satan, right? And her, him, vice versa, right? Because he didn't treat her the same after the sin, right? Which was 
as much his fault as it was her fault. Because she was still in him when the Lord told him that. Right. As when she answers the serpent, she answers him differently than what the Lord told him. Right. There's only one mediator between the angel that told him that and his wife, and that's Adam himself. The only way Eve could have answered that question that the serpent asked her is if Adam told her something different right. than what God told him. Right. He told her, though, not to eat of the tree in the middle of the garden. Right. But wait a minute, I thought that was the tree of life that was the tree in the middle of the garden. He didn't think he could eat a tree of life. Right. Just the tree of knowledge and good and evil. There's two trees, though. One fruit you can eat of. Right. It won't try to teach you evil. Uh, 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 <laughs> only, good, only good. The other one would teach you and give you the knowledge of good and evil if you ate of the fruit of his body. Right. Meaning it would do it with both Adam and Eve, and the only way he could do it with Adam is butt sex. <laughs> and it's the butt sex <laughs> that messed Adam up, right? And made him condemn himself and his wife until he died, right? And Satan did, right? See, if you condemn the sin, right? And you did it willingly, right? It was your fault, <laughs> right? And then you're dying because you won't forgive your own mistake, right? You're condemning it until you die. Mm -hmm. And then when you die, well, there, you know, like, right. you wouldn't let it go either. You wouldn't let it go. <laughs> and then you die in that sin, and then Satan did the same thing to Adam and made sure he did that. Right? After he had the child with Adam, which was the daughter, right, he went and drowned himself in the deep, according to Ezekiel 31, right? And the waters were stayed, right? So he caused the mourning for him as well when he died, right? Jesus did, Jesus did. Now, when if I go to Jerusalem and all that, you'll be happy for a moment when I die. Mm -hmm. But it'll cause you fear when I go up into heaven, right? And you all see me, right? Right. Now, I'm not trying to get there yet. <laughs> I got to find my wife and the second male and his wife. Right? And there's no rush on that, by the way. That means four people, mm -hmm. two males and two females, like half of Noah, right? Which were eight total, four males and four females, right? The wife of Noah and his sons, right? And the grandson did something with the granddad, right? He shouldn't have done. Right? That makes me wonder what's wrong with Mary Bell. She's acting weird too, right? But I'm over it, right? I'm trying to let her go, and even if she was transgender, I forgive her and I move on. I move on. Whatever's going on there, she's the one acting weird. <laughs> she's the one trying to adopt a different persona from me, right? And ain't who she says she is. Is she? Is she? You know. Right? She could have even been a blind that she ha even had a child, right? And I don't trust her in that, right? And I told her that too, right? You're probably lying about it all, right? And, uh, even Scott didn't get you pregnant, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or did he think you missed Carrie Patrick too and you're lying to me about all that? Mm-hmm. See, if you had... A child with Scott or me, right? Unless he's real small, right? You either, he either died and you had two mm -hmm, miscarriages, right? Or again, you lied about being pregnant at all. Mm -hmm. See, one thing a transgender can't do is have a child, right? Now, there's also barren women, which is different too, right? That's what Rachel and Jacob had to deal with, and so did Hannah, right? She was having problems conceiving with her husband as well. Mm -hmm. So was Sarah and Abraham, right? And Rebecca too, right? Three of the women around three of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were having trouble conceiving, right? Now, if Rebecca did something, who could she go to if she was having problems conceiving with Isaac? Ishmael? Because <laughs> she had two sons, too, both fertilized by two different eggs. 
They were not identical twins like Tia and Tamara Mary. Right. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> sister, 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 sister. Right, right. <laughs> now Leah and Rachel were fighting over Jacob and Laban or whatever his name is, or Laban, whatever it is, right. He made Jacob marry Leah first and then serving 14 years for Rebecca, right. But he got to sleep with her, I think, too, right? And if I'm understanding it right, he just had to serve for her for 14 years, right? To get her, right? Too, too. Now, what he had to do also is fill Leah's wheat first, right? And then he could have the other daughter, too, right? But then she got pregnant right away, but Leah did. I mean, Rachel did, right? Right. Mm hmm. And I don't think she got pregnant until 14 years later either. Right. Because Leah's just popping out babies left and right. Right. Then she tries to use Bilhah. And then Leah uses Zilpah, her other, her handmaid. Right. And he has a few children with him. Right. And then Bilhah gets with Reuben later on. Right. And it's a big mess. Though. <laughs> it was a big mess. Talk about your family drama, right? Up the wazoo. And then finally Rachel has Joseph and she says, the Lord has removed my reproach among women, right? And that's where Isaiah takes up the idea of a reproach in chapter 4, verse 1, right? And this also has to do with women that can't conceive like the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. Now, Christ would be her seventh man, right? And five of them married her. One of them was her current lover. So what, Jesus could be her seventh lover? Wow. Right. <laughs> That's why I was wishing to do it, right? I wasn't mixed up in politics of the church where they're trying to make, make us wait for marriage. That's politics. That's politics. Yes, it is. Moses didn't say it that way. If a man enticed a woman anyway, and she's unbetrothed, right, and she lay with him, right, then he can ask her father's hand in marriage, right? And they still have the option to let them marry or not, and then he pays 50 shekels according to her dowry. Mm-hmm. Because it might take the father an additional dowry to even get her married if she's not a virgin, right? But that can happen in Israel. And, uh, and the church, and the church. If you're saved by grace through faith, not a verse, at least any measure most, and Jesus is pointing out how they not follow the law anyway, and, uh, the problem is you're not following the law. Mm -hmm. Nor are you understanding that grace is in the law, even when the disciples are plucking corn, right, and picking corn in the cornfield as they're going through it because they're hungry, right? And David ate the showbread because they were hungry, which is lawful for only the priests to eat, right? But again, right. the Egyptian was stoned for picking up a seed, right? But at the same time, is that Showing you something, taking the law too far, right? If I'm just picking up a stick, do you stall me for it normally? No, even if it doesn't have a thing, right? Then you're murdering me mm -hmm. just for picking up a few sticks. Now, if you go to God and God tells you to do that, that's not God, right? That's the devil in disguise, right? That's what he means. Do you know Satan in the law from God in the law? Mm hmm. He also talks about a woman being raped by a man, too. And that, that says murder to the woman. And then you got David and Bathsheba, right? Where David sins for Bathsheba and knows her, maybe he even forced her, right? After she was purifying herself, which means she could have been ovulated when he was with her. Right? And he got her pregnant right away, right? Now, he, too, like Amnon, could have forced her to sleep with him, right? Because he's the key. He's it for her, right? 
She, of course, has to do what he commands her to do, right? That's still rape. That's still rape. Problem is, David was the one who should have been stoned there, and what he did and said was get your eye out the way. <laughs> Damn. But he did it because, again, he thought she was making a play for him, probably, right? Because he could see her baby, and he thought she could see him from her vantage point, maybe, right? But what if she couldn't, right? See, the higher you are, mm -hmm. the more you might not be able to see somebody, right? <laughs> the closer you are to someone, right, you might can see them, though they not see you, right? Oh, no. So he was in his palace looking down and saw her baby didn't sit for her. Right. Maybe that's why Amnon was with his sister kind of forcing that too. Right. And because of what David did, his sons picked up the sack for him. Right. And then Absalom is sleeping with the ten virgins he married in Jerusalem. Right. Mm -hmm. And all this drama happened over Bathsheba, right? And killing Uriah. Mm -hmm. But there again, he might think they're making a play for his throne, right? See, he's also to guard the throne against treason, right? Treason could be someone plotting against the throne, right? To put their child on the throne in place of David's child, right? That's usually called treason, like with King Arthur and Guinevere, if she slept with Lancelot, right? Even though Lancelot is a good knight, right? She was married to King Arthur, right? But like in the movie, right? When she slept with Lancelot, right? If she's the king's wife, that is a bastard child who can't sit on the throne, right? She's supposed to only get pregnant by Arthur. But instead, evil Morgana raped her own brother, right? I'd say that happened anywhere, but anyway, <laughs> and made her have a child with him. <laughs> but that again is mythology, right? I ain't saying that happened to me either, right? I'm just messing with you about some of this shit, right? Because I see it in movies, idiot. I know you have. Everything I'm talking about, I see in a movie, including saying Cliff could have raped his students or something. <laughs> If he tried to force them to stop him from raping them and really rape them, but that's I see in the movie too, Cliff. Right? It's not real. It's not real. But because of what I went through, I learned to make up stories to cope with the time I had in the Navy, which I spent over two years on the ship, not being trained worth the damn, not knowing what I was doing the whole time, and trying to figure out a way to survive on the ship, right? Until I could get off it with the medical after meeting Gina, right? And started really hearing voices in 93, right? Which is the first voice I really heard that was clear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Leo voice, right? Never heard voices before that. I didn't go around telling people, God's talking to me. Nope. Nope. <laughs> sure didn't, sure didn't. Or tell them, thus saith the Lord, right? Things like that. <laughs> like the prophets of Israel used to do, right? I didn't say, to see them, thus saith the Lord, let's get married in Jerusalem, right? I asked her. Yeah, I was trying to ask her to marry me in Jerusalem if I was in Jerusalem, I was right? That also meant, okay, we can marry somewhere else too, by the way, right? But since we are both in the Mediterranean, I was trying to be romantic. Right. <laughs> and uh, we had to marry you. Right. Because, see, her dad wasn't involved because he did something wrong to her, like my ex-girlfriend, Lisa. And, uh, Lisa's dad was doing something wrong to her. His own daughter, right? And I told you what happened there. <laughs> now, some women get confused even with the step parents, right? Because sometimes the step parent who's not related to the daughter will still try to rape the daughter, right? Instead of staying with the mother, right? <laughs> All this is insane. I know it is. Especially for the man, being that he's older than the daughter, try to get both the mother and the daughter 
But it's also said she's not supposed to sleep with a mother and her daughter, right? If she has a daughter from a previous relationship, right? So you're not reading the Torah. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not even living that, right? Or trying to. Now, he blesses you if you try to keep the law. But you're cursed if you break the law unless you try to repent. It has to be forgiven of breaking the law. Mm -hmm. Now, you could also, with Christ, be forgiven for your sins if you're trying to find you a wife, which is a good thing, right? And people are interfering with your marriages. And, uh, see, if I've been with 17 women, I'm obviously trying to find a wife. And if you don't think I'm attracted enough to find one, I don't care. I'm trying to find one anyway. Even if she's dog ugly, I don't care. <laughs> I want a woman. I want a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of putting a bag over her face if she's got a nice body? <laughs> I have, I have. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. say it that way. Come on. I know I'm not no Prince Charming anymore, but I once was. <laughs> I can show her my older pictures and say, this is what Lisa looks like, this is what I look like now because I tell these stories, right? She still might hit it, <laughs> or let me hit it. <laughs> she's having problems herself. <laughs> And that's fine. If she does it, it's fine if she don't. Right. You ain't got to do that. You don't want to do me. Right. If you want to, we can't. Right. Your choice. Your choice. <laughs> right. Right. No rush. No harassment. Just a friend trying to find a girlfriend. <laughs> Even if you're having marital problems with your current person. Right. Like, for some reason... Christabel offered to find me a girlfriend, but oddly, she also didn't <laughs> find me a girlfriend. Why is that? Because <laughs> I said hypothetically to her boyfriend, Sean, or her fiance, Sean, if she did start liking me, I would pay you for your expenses in bringing her over here. Does that sound like a good thing to offer him? If she were to, hypothetically? Right. Now, why would I say that in case he was thinking it himself, right? Right? Right. <laughs> it don't mean I'm saying she would like me. It's not. It's not, right? But if she did like me and wasn't trying to get me a girlfriend, right, I would still understand, right, that she's not my woman, but he is, right? And I would have to offer him to pay his expenses whether she did something with me or not, right? You know, I mean, as a hypothetical gesture of goodwill towards him, right? So he would understand I wasn't trying to just steal her from him either, either, right? I know legally, right, if you bring her over here for yourself, 